Hi friends, Dr. Marta Perez here and welcome back to Prepare for Birth. Today's episode is 10 Things You Need to Know About Preeclampsia, Part 2. In Part 1, I covered numbers 1 through 5, and today I'm going to cover number 6 through 10 of 10 Things You Need to Know About Preeclampsia. If you missed my first video, the link to it is right there in the banner, so you might want to go watch that. It lays a lot of the background information and important information about preeclampsia, and now we're going to go into some of the frequently asked questions and the number 6 through 10. So if you've already watched that video and you're here now, let's get started. All right, so welcome back from the floor of my closet. In between part one video and this video, I had a baby. I took a short maternity leave because taking care of a newborn is all consuming, but now I'm back for some educational content. Number six thing you need to know about preeclampsia, hypertensive disorders in pregnancy are treated in a variety of ways. So the first thing I want to talk about is delivery as treatment. So the hypertensive disorders of pregnancy typically occur in pregnancy and the end of the pregnancy or delivery sometimes drastically improves the symptoms at the time of delivery. For other people, it starts the improvement process, even though they may have symptoms and signs for weeks, but it's not always the cure. As we mentioned in the first video, sometimes hypertensive disorders and preeclampsia present for the very first time in the days or weeks postpartum when there was no sign of them during pregnancy. It's just one of the mysterious things about preeclampsia. So delivery can be treatment and can help end some of the effects, but it isn't always. The next thing is magnesium sulfate. One of the most dreaded outcomes of preeclampsia is eclampsia or having a seizure. It puts both the pregnant person and fetus's life in danger. We want to prevent seizures. Magnesium sulfate infusions through the IV help do that. They have some unpleasant side effects like feeling really hot and flushed and feeling very sleepy. They're, it's usually done and the time leading up to delivery and then for a time after delivery, usually 12 to 24 hours, and it helps decrease the risk of seizure. It's monitored very closely to make sure the amount is in the therapeutic range, not too little and not too much. The final aspect of treatment for preeclampsia or hypertensive disorders of pregnancy is blood pressure medication. If blood pressures are in a dangerous range, we do use medication to keep them in a safer range. Which medication and how it's administered is a really complex conversation that I could talk about for hours, but I'm not going to but just know that those may be used as well. Thing you need to know, number seven about preeclampsia, that is the recurrence rate. So if you've had preeclampsia in a first pregnancy, which is a risk factor, first pregnancies are higher risk than other pregnancies, what is the risk it'll affect your next pregnancy? And that depends on the severity and type in the first pregnancy. More severe types of preeclampsia that present earlier in a pregnancy are higher risk of recurring in the next one, something in the realm of like 25 to 65%, which is a really big range, but it just goes to show there's a, a range of severity there. Whereas preeclampsia or hypertensive disorders that are more mild and present at the end of pregnancy are less likely to recur in the next pregnancy, and that risk of recurrence is actually less than 10%. So there's a really wide range there. Number eight, hypertensive disorders of pregnancy prevention. So one of the most popular questions and things many want to know about preeclampsia and hypertensive disorders is how to prevent them. And the most powerful tool we have in our toolbox, and really the only one, is aspirin. Baby aspirin at a dose of 81 milligrams up to a higher dose of about 150 has been studied for the prevention of preeclampsia and hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. If aspirin is started in the end of the first trimester, in between 11 and 12 weeks, hopefully before 16 weeks and taken daily throughout pregnancy, there's a 10 to 20% reduction in risk of preeclampsia. Now for a very common complication of pregnancy, a reduction of 10 to 20% is a big deal in the public health realm and may be a big deal for you in your life. Baby aspirin is very safe. It has a good safety profile for both the pregnant person and the fetus. There might be some very small increased risk of bleeding at the time of delivery. Not a huge risk though. So it's considered very safe and it can decrease the risk of preeclampsia. It's usually recommended for people who either have one high risk factor or two or more moderate risk factors. So you're considered high risk for preeclampsia if you have severe preeclampsia in a prior pregnancy, you have twins or triplets or multiple fetuses, you have diabetes, high blood pressure outside of an early pregnancy, chronic kidney disease, or autoimmune diseases. Moderate risk factors include it being your first pregnancy, 
age over 35, BMI above 30, and a family history and a first degree relative of preeclampsia. So again, typically aspirin's recommended for someone with at least one high risk factor and more than one moderate risk factor. That being said, because aspirin has a good safety profile and a good effectiveness at decreasing preeclampsia, we are seeing talk in the medical and OBGYN world about expanding those indications for aspirin and offering it to more people than who just fit that profile. So certainly you can talk with your doctor about if aspirin therapy would be right for you, but it is something to consider. There are no other supplements or vitamins or specific things to do that can decrease the risk of preeclampsia. Obviously going into pregnancy with a healthy lifestyle and not smoking, etc., can prevent preeclampsia as well. But in terms of really powerful ways to reduce it, we're really talking about aspirin here. Thing to know about preeclampsia number nine, having had preeclampsia confers an increased risk of long-term negative health outcomes related to cardiovascular disease. So people who have had preeclampsia, especially severe types of hypertensive disorders in pregnancy, have an increased risk of having cardiovascular disease, including everything that goes with it, high blood pressure, myocardial infarction or a heart attack, stroke, and death from cardiovascular disease. This is because what is fascinating about pregnancy is that we like to call it a window to the future. The stresses on the pregnant person's body of a pregnancy can sometimes reveal the likelihood of certain types of diseases or pathologies that otherwise wouldn't present till later. And it can show us people who are at high risk of certain outcomes. And that's what we're seeing with preeclampsia as well. There may be an underlying genetic risk factor that is shared, certainly high risk of cardiovascular disease runs in families, or there may be a common environmental and lifestyle issues that carry forward as well that put us at risk for preeclampsia and long-term cardiovascular disease. Certainly one thing to remind you of is in the United States, cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death for American women. It's higher than any cancer. So already, if you're a woman living in America, the odds are stacked that cardiovascular disease is something that should be really serious for you and want to prevent. And instead of this information about a high risk for cardiovascular disease raising your anxiety if you've had preeclampsia, I want you to use it as and think of it as an opportunity to improve your health now so that you can prevent the outcomes of cardiovascular disease. Things like having a healthy diet, lots of vegetables and fiber, exercising, not smoking, staying at a healthy weight, etc. Finally, thing number 10 to know about preeclampsia is that not all high blood pressure, I can already hear my baby crying, so we're wrapping it up, is that not all high blood pressure in pregnancy is preeclampsia. One important thing to re recognize is chronic hypertension. So if you have high blood pressure outside or early in pregnancy, it's most likely chronic hypertension than it is preeclampsia in the early pregnancy or outside of pregnancy. Chronic hypertension raises the risk that you'll have preeclampsia. Remember, that's one of the indications for aspirin therapy, but it should be diagnosed hopefully early in pregnancy before we're confused. Is this chronic hypertension or is this a hypertensive disorder of pregnancy? So something to keep a tab on, make sure you're going to the doctor once a year in between your pregnancies, etc. The next thing is white coat hypertension. I get asked about this a lot. That means basically that the there's a level of anxiety and stress and a hormone response to that when we go to the doctor or hospital that causes our blood pressure to be higher than normal. White coat hypertension is common. You can work with your doctor about distinguishing it from hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. Though I will say, if someone's been going to the doctor their whole pregnancy and suddenly towards the end of pregnancy their blood pressures go up, that is less likely to be a white coat hypertension picture to me. Finally, there are really other less common causes of high blood pressure, and those include certain illegal drug use, um, methamphetamines and cocaine raise our blood pressures a lot. Other endocrine, renal, kidney um, diseases, hyperthyroidism, and some other very rare things. So there are some mimickers out there that it's important as a clinician to be aware of. I hope this video is really helpful. I'm really glad that we are able to go over so many important things about this very, very, very common complication of pregnancy and postpartum so that you feel empowered and understand what is typical in pregnancy, what is not, and how it would be treated and how to prevent it. If you have questions, always feel free to ask them below. And I would love your recommendations for what other things we're going to cover about pregnancy. Don't forget to subscribe and like so that more people can benefit from this knowledge. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're interested in my own pregnancy and delivery, I will be uploading, uploading a vlog about that. So keep stay tuned for that. Bye.